quick video about self-help. Um, I'm hoping that this video will help those who self-harm and self-injure because that's what it's about. It's fighting five myths that I think are really important for people who self-harm harm or self-injure to know about and to know that they're not true. Um, basically, negative stereotypes about self-harm can make it really hard for those who haven't talked to someone about it come out because they're scared they're going to be judged or people are going to react in a really negative way. And I guess people who self-harm, it's not like a disease. It's not dyslexia or a cold or a flu. It's something much more complicated. So I'm hoping this video will help you guys. People who self-injure are trying to get attention. That is completely not true. People who self-injure may need attention, but they're not doing it to get attention. Okay? Um, people who self-harm or self-injure, whatever you like to call it, are basically... They don't know how to cope. Okay? So that's how they cope. Um, and most people who self-injure will actually try their very hardest to hide their wounds and scars as they may be embarrassed, which they shouldn't be, um, and they just don't want people to ask questions. People who self-harm are suicidal. This isn't true. This is going to sound really strange, but there can be people that are completely healthy that just don't know how to cope with stress, and that's the way they do it. Um, it's basically a coping strategy, and I guess you could say... Um, Many people use it to survive, not to die. However, in saying that, sometimes an accidental death can occur due to self-harm. People who self-harm could stop if they wanted. This isn't true. Um, I've been self-harming since I was in year nine. So that's been about five or six years, I think. And it becomes a very um, addictive behaviour. It's almost like compulsive. Um, I guess because I have OCD it also um, becomes more of an obsession. Um, and I guess people that are watching this video that don't self-harm but have a friend that may self-harm, don't tell them just to stop. It's going to make them alienate further and they'll just completely shut off from talking to anyone about it which is really dangerous. Um, if people are going to self-harm you're better off having a good communication with that person. Yeah so Definitely, you can't just stop self-harm if you want to. Um, it's, it'd be a behaviour that would be very hard to stop, but it's definitely, a, like, it's definitely something you could do. Self-harm is when you cut. Um, not necessarily. Self-harm um, can include a lot of different behaviours. Cutting is a very common one. However, people can burn, scratch, um, they can bang their head, they can pull out their hair, they can overdose. There are a whole range of things people do um, for self-harm, not just cutting. The wound isn't that bad, therefore the problem can't be that bad. This is not true. Um, if someone is cutting, it is obviously something really distressing. Regardless of whether it's a scratch or it's a deep cut that needs stitches, that person is obviously really, really alone and needs help. Um, a really good quote I found on the internet actually is, self-harm isn't the problem, the problem is what is causing the self-harm in the first place. I think that is an awesome quote, um, it's very true. Um, I guess what you could say is, self-harm doesn't just happen. Um, it's something where obviously there is something that's really distressing, that self-harm... Um, is something that they start doing because they don't know how to deal with their emotions so that's the one way they can deal with it and I guess in a way it takes the, the emotional pain and turns it into a physical pain so they feel that that's the way they can deal with it yeah so that's definitely not true so some emotional reasons behind cutting and self-harm um, basically people do it um, when they feel they can't deal with their emotions and they kind of feel out of control. So some of the reasons they do is um, to 
to regulate strong emotions, so high levels of stress um, it can basically temporarily calm your nerves. Um, it can distract yourself from emotional pain, so turning your emotional pain to physical pain. Um, however, some people won't feel the physical pain straight away. It may not be until after, um, that, but they'll definitely feel some like physical pain at some stage. Um, people do it when they can't express how they're feeling or put it into words. Um, it's basically a way they can um, display their anger or deep sadness. Um, to exert a sense of control over your body, um, people do it to self-punish or express self-hate and basically self-soothe. Um, basically they, they don't have calm, intense emotions, so cutting or all the other types of self-harm I've told you about. Um, yeah, it's what they do. What can you do to help yourself? You can acknowledge your problem. Um, you're probably hurting on the inside and need to stop this addictive behaviour. Um, you need to talk to someone you trust, so it could be a friend or a family member, maybe a school counsellor. Um, you could identify the self-harm triggers, so what triggers you to feel the need to cut or all the other types of self-injury I've talked about. Um, I think you need to recognise that self-injury is an attempt to self-soothe um, and you could help, you could learn to develop better ways to calm yourself. Um, and I guess a really big one is figuring out what function the self-injury is soothing, is serving, sorry. Um, so replace self-harm with expressing your sadness, your anger and your fear, but in healthy ways. What can you do instead of cutting or self-harming? So some other ways you can deal with those intense emotions. Um, so to deal with anger, you could try running, dancing really fast, screaming, punching a pillow, throwing something or ripping something apart. Um, maybe even a boxing bag, you know, give it a bit of a hit. Um, so this is a really big one. A lot of people self-injure um, because they feel emotional numbness. Um, so you could try squeezing ice cubes, holding a package of frozen food, um, take a really cold shower, chew something with a strong taste like chilli, peppers, um, raw ginger, or a grapefruit, grapefruit peel. Um, so calm yourself, you could take a bubble bath, um, do some breathing exercises, write in a journal, do some drawing maybe. Um, a lot of people like to self-harm because of the blood. Um, basically, instead of cutting, maybe you could try drawing red ink where you normally cut yourself. Um, another one I've actually tried, which isn't too bad, like it's worked better than anything else for me, is um, getting red food dye and putting it in with ice cubes and then freezing them. Um, and basically, when you feel like you need, like really out of control and you feel numb and you also but you also like the look of blood when you self injure um what you can do is grab a couple of the ice cubes that are red so you put the food dye in and freeze frozen them um and scrunch them in your hands really tight so it hurts because it's really really cold but also you get all the blood um or well not the blood but the the ice that's melting it runs down your arm so it kind of feels a bit um like you're cutting so yeah, that's a really good one for me. Um, but all those things, um, they may not all work for you. Um, you basically have to try different things until you find something that works or at least um, reduces the, the amounts of times that you're self-injuring. So this part of the video, I have some helpful tips um, to help you deal with someone who self-injures. So first of all, you need to understand, and I, I know that the person that you're dealing with is not going to expect you to understand, but you just have to try. So if you just try to understand, even though you may not, that's all that they can ask for. And the next thing is reassure. Let the person know that you care about them 
and that you're there to talk to and you're there to listen and then make sure you're available when they need that little bit of extra support. So you need to encourage them, you need to encourage them to express emotions including anger. So instead of isolating themselves in their room, get them to deal with those emotions in um, in a healthier way, if you know what I mean. So instead of self-injury, um, you know, let them go to a isolated area and just scream. Like, um, just other strategies instead of so much self-harm. Um, so spend time with them doing activities you both enjoy. So maybe reading a book together or um, going for a drive. Just things that um, lift your spirits a little bit, I guess. Um, so find resources, um, it's always good if you could find them a support group or maybe a therapist they can see, um, if they're not quite ready to do that, like don't do it behind their back, make sure you talk to them about it. Um, you could always maybe get some pamphlets or a book to help them understand um, what they're going through a little bit more too, because often um, until you start talking you don't really understand, you know that you cut or whatever. Um, self-injury you do um, to feel better but you don't actually know the emotional side of things behind it if you know what I mean. Um, so that's always really useful and it will also be useful for you to help you understand what they're going through. Um, don't judge them under no circumstances should you judge them um, and that includes like don't say to them you need to stop cutting like just stop because that will, as I said before, um, cause them to isolate themselves and yeah, it's not a good thing for them to be alone when they're going through this so it's really important that you just um, avoid judgmental comments. Um, so examine and change. If the self-harmer is a family member, um, especially if it's your child and you're the parent, um, prepare yourself to address the issues within the family um, and it's not it's not about blame um, so much it's basically about learning about new ways that you can communicate within your family because um, I guess you may have a couple of children, say, and one of them is self-harming. You're going to want to blame yourself, but don't. Um, you just you just need to think of other solutions um, that you can get your children to express themselves in a healthy way, and you know have a couple of family meetings maybe. But yeah, it's definitely nothing you can blame yourself for. But yeah, so basically. They're the tips um, for helping someone. Yeah, so if you have any other questions, shoot me an inbox. I'll definitely get back and reply ASAP. So I hope you've liked this video. I hope it shed some light on those who self-harm or those who have family or friends that self-harm. Um, I really urge you to talk to someone. Um, even if it's me, I don't mind. Shoot me an inbox. I'll definitely reply. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that this will be of some use for some people. Um, take care and I want to talk. See ya.